Hey guys, so now we're going to delve into the world of Character Animator. Character Animator is a puppet-based animation program where it uses files from Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop and um, it is used to generate a puppet that can be moved by using your webcam and your keyboard. All right, so before we begin, using Character Animator, we will design a character in Adobe Photoshop. You can use Illustrator, but for now, I'm going to be using Adobe Photoshop. So let's head to the tablet right there. Okay, guys, so we are first going to download a template for your character preparation in Character Animator in Photoshop. All right, so there is a website that you can get free templates for Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Animator. It's OKSamurai.com and I'm going to place that link in the description. All right, so here, this guy has so many puppets in there, stuff that he has done. You could also check out his channel as well, OK Samurai. All right, so here we see the blank template and we're on the side here we have a mouth template as well but we're going to get into that afterwards okay but we're focusing on the blank template now when you op when you download it all right you will get a zip file called blank template and when you unzip this file you will get two files in there your adobe illustrator and your adobe photoshop file all right so let's go in photoshop and open our blank template Okay, guys, this is how our blank template will look. All right, if you notice, there's nothing on there. All right, there's nothing on there. And in your layers, we are seeing that there are several layers there. We have eye, right eyebrow, left eyebrow, right eye, left eye, nose, mouth, face, background, body. All right, now when we open our right eye will see that there are several layers there are three layers in each the left eye and the right eye and if you open the mouth layer ooh, this is the largest layer we have several um this is the largest um folder where you have several layers in there okay so let's now i am going to be using this character right here all right it's a character one of my students designed, Jory Alcindor. Let me give you your credit. Okay, so this is a character that we'll use. And I will use the three-quarter view of this character, being the most popular view and the most diverse view. So just let me copy this. And I am going to create a new layer and call this Jory. All right, and I'm going to place, just paste it in there. I could stretch it out if I want to. It's only reference, so I could stretch this out. All right, and afterwards, I am going to, just let me put my keyboard right there. I am going to play with the opacity. All right, I will create another layer and place a light gray color on there. Okay, mm, I'm going to play the opacity a little bit again. Right now it's on 59. I'm going to put it down on 40. Okay, good to go. In that case, in that way, I can see what I'm drawing. Okay, guys, so the first layer that I usually um, start off with is the face background layer. So right now I'm on that layer right here. So let's begin. Okay, so let's let me get um, Jory's color, the skin color for his character. So I'm going to let's use the eyedropper tool, and nice, and then let's bring this down. Okay, back to the face background. Let me just fill this in, right quick, and all right. 
right so we have the face background prepared now with character animator guys the layers that you see here are the default layers that are used for character animator you can add um, layers in there but the essential layers are those that came with the template all right i really i'm really liking this template because it saves a lot of time because just imagine you have to be preparing all these layers all right for all the characters that you do i appreciate the fact that there's an actual template here okay so let's get back to our character so we are going to work on the nose now the nose layer so let me hide this guy here so we have our black and All right, and okay. Now I am going to color that nose in because the nose, as we can see here, the nose is overlapping the eye. All right, so I'm going to color this guy in. So we're now make sure we're on the right layer. Oh my goodness. I had my eyedropper tool on here. Okay, and perfect all right okay wonderful all right so afterwards what we're gonna do let's work on the eyebrows all right so we have the right eyebrow and the left eyebrow now keep in mind that when we talk about left and right we're speaking of the character not you the character because you are facing the character so if i'm a, if i have to choose my right hair it would be actually the character's left Right, so left and right is actually referring to the left or the right side of the character. Keep that in mind. So let's work on the right side, which is this side here. Oh my goodness! <laughs> All right. Okay, so you have the right eyebrow, and let's work on the left eyebrow. All right. Now, if you notice that, if you notice the eyebrow is overlapping the nose and that's not what we want. So we can simply place that nose layer in between the left and the right. Okay. You can, you can rearrange your layers. Once character animator can read the correct names in there, it won't be a problem. All right. So you can rearrange your layers. So let's look at how our character looks. Okay. All right. So let's start working on the eyes so we are going to work on the right eye now if you notice we have right eyeball the right pupil and the right blink okay so we are going to work on the right eyeball right now okay so it has to be white here and then or it can be as it has to be a circle it has to be a circle in there so I'm going to draw this in. I'm going to have it a, I'm going to have this a little larger than the actual character and I'll show you why in a bit. Okay? So this would be your Oh my goodness, I am working on the wrong <laughs> I am working on the wrong layer right here. So what I will do, I'm just going to copy. I'm working on the nose layer. <laughs> Cut this out. And I'm just going to right eyeball and I'm going to paste it in. Okay, so I have it right there. I should have put paste in place, but we're good. We're good. All right, I'm going to put this eye a little higher up because I want our eyes to be in line. I want it to be in line with this one. Okay, so here I'm diverting a bit from the original drawing here because I want the eyes to be in line. Okay, so what I'm going to do 
since I have this on my clipboard already, all right, what I'm going to do, I am going to paste this on my left eyebrow as well. All right. Now, keep in mind that we have to reduce the size of this eye because we are dealing with perspective here. So, the, this eye will appear to be larger than this one here. So, we're going to... All right. We're going to scale this down. All right. We can even scale it a little lower. All right. So, we have this here. All right. You'll see the reason why I am actually having the... The, the eyeball size larger than um, the actual drawing in a bit. All right, so we have this eyeball here. Let's go back to our right pupil. Pupil of the eye, okay? So, black. Yeah. Okay, so with a right pupil, let's... Okay, now you know I like to put my I like to put my little highlights on the eye. So yeah, a little one here. Okay, so instead of drawing all this over, what I will do, I will just copy this and go onto my left pupil right here, and I will paste it on. I'm gonna paste it in place so that I will know exactly where it went to. <laughs> All right, and then, like we did with the left eyeball, okay, we are going to reduce the size of our left pupil, okay? All right. Okay, so we have... Let's look at our character. All right, his eyes are larger than usual, usual, sorry, but that's, that is not a problem. All right, let me show you why I had the eyes larger than usual. What I will do now, okay, over the eyes, I am going to create a layer. I usually call this layer the, the eye frame. That's my name for it. You could call it whatever. I frame. Okay. All right. So what I will do with this hair, guys, now, I will just on the I frame. I'm going to just hide the eyes for a while and the head so I can actually see the artwork here. In fact, no, I won't do that because I raised the eye a bit. So I'm going to use this as a guide for my frame. Okay. I am on the correct layer. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to place this around the eye here this would be one now my eyes my eyes are overlapping okay the nose is overlapping the eye okay so if i try to do the frame over this one it will overlap okay so what i will what i'm going to do i am going to place my nose all right. In fact, they're over both of them already. But I'm going to place my nose right on top. Okay. So the nose won't bother the eye frame. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to hide my nose and go back to my eye frame. And. No, I don't like this. Nope. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just put a frame around the eye here. In fact, let me just hide this here so that you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to put a frame around the eyes here. Okay. 
Okay, so let me try to get these white spots here. All right, so when I view this, all right, the eye, the eyeballs. Let me auto select this. You could see it won't when the eye shifts to this side here. All right, it won't just go over. All right, over the eyeball. It will go under here. So this um, frame that we made will be an overlap. All right, great. So we can add our nose in now. Okay, awesome. So for now, we are done with the head. We can say we're done with the head for now. All right, and let's work now on Jory's body. Depending on how detailed we want our character to look. All right, I usually have the body as just the, the legs and the torso. All right, but depending on how you want your character to be detailed and whatnot. Okay, this is a simple character. We can actually put the different body parts as different layers. Okay, once they are in that body folder. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'll have the neck and the torso and the legs as the body. Notice that I shifted the belt a little because it's we need to get the correct proportions and the correct positioning. So we will see that the belt in the center of the chest here, the belt will fall in line here. Like I said, I'm doing it this way, but depending on how your character will be moving, okay, you will know how you want your character so if your character is walking and your legs has to be moving okay you would have the legs as a different layer but if this is only for a dialogue piece you can get away with just this i'm keeping the arms at different layers because i will have my arms moving all right so i will have them at different layers okay all right so with the body here we could start coloring that body The neck, all right, the, the shoot. I can just bring this, the color all the way up with the shoot. All right, here and here. No, I'm not, I'm on the wrong layer. One, two, right, perfect. Nice, nice, and the pants, agree. Put the pants in there and this darker part of the pants. Let's fill this guy in here. The shoes now. There are parts of the shoe where it's shoe where I have to probably dive in. No, it's good. All right, and then this darker part of the shoe. We're gonna Okay. So we have the shoe in here. Let me just Perfect. Okay, we have this part of the belt will just be a lighter gray. We're going to add it in here. Nope. Not you. You. Okay. Awesome. All right. So here we have the body, right? But this is just the body in the body folder. That's what we chose. That's how we wanted our body to be. But I am going to add the two arms. All right. So... We have in one arm and another arm. So I'm going to call this arm here, the first one, arm right. And I'm going to call the other arm arm left. Okay, so let's work on the right arm first. Zoom this guy in. I'm gonna make a couple changes here. So his shoulder, I'm gonna bring this a little lower here. And, okay. And color the, one, 
two, three. It's going to be a four-fingered character. Okay. So let me just lock this in. All right. Lock this guy in here. And... Fill this in here, the fingers. All right, okay. Okay, so we have this left, the arm, the arm right, the right arm, and then let's head to the left arm. Okay. Um, I would usually just flip them around and copy and paste, but for in some instances, I would prefer to just draw this guy in. Now, notice that it's overlapping here. Don't worry about that. We're going to change this around. Okay. Okay. So, yes, just let me add the color to this guy here. And boom. Next one. Boom. Boom. All right. Okay, so we have the left. So we're going to rectify the problem of the overlap in here. So what we're going to do is just replace the layers, not replace, but reposition the layers. Okay, so the left arm will go behind the body. All right. Now, there is a, something that I usually do sometimes. I go and I change it's around to give it more depth so I will change the brightness a little lower all right so that we can see some more depth in the character all right so what we're gonna do now okay we are oh I noticed that there are some points that I want to okay I want to polish up a bit yeah okay let's just polish this thing up all right okay zoom out all right so if you notice guys um there is some cleaning up that i have to do as well so i will also okay delete okay i will delete the back layer the background layer the jewelry layer and i am going to delete the grid because we don't want that we don't want it okay so just let me do some cleaning up right there before we head into character animator okay guys so right now we are viewing the welcome screen of our character animator software if you notice here we have several okay example puppets in there okay but we are going to import our own character in there so what we're going to do we are going to click on new project right here and then Okay, you're going to where you want your your your, your character to be see your, your project file to be saved. Okay, so right now I'm just gonna place it in this character lesson. I'm just gonna call this Jory. Alright, so as you can see right now, you are seeing just let me <laughs> Okay, you can, you are seeing my face here and there are several little <laughs> little red dots on my face okay this is used for the facial tracking of the character all right so don't let this alarm you or scare you all right so what i'm going to do now i'm going to import my character by just um ah, i opened up uh, microsoft wood sorry da -da 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 -da. all right so i'm going to open where I save, I save my jewelry file in my blank template right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag this on this project area here. And notice that we're seeing jewelry right there, the jewelry file. And this symbol here next to it represents that it's a puppet right now. Okay. So when we right click on jewelry, okay, we can see that we want to export our puppet or edit original now when you go into edit original okay you will see that let's try this 
Photoshop opened when we try to edit the original. All right. So we can actually make edits to our character. All right. As we're working along in Photoshop. Once we save it, the changes will be made in character animator. Now, we want to see how Jory looks on the scene right here. So what we do, once Jory is selected here, we have our add new scene icon right here and we click on this. We'll generate a scene with Jory. If you notice, Jory is just floating around here. I'm moving and he's moving as well. But... The motion we are seeing here is stuff that we, we may not want. All right. Okay, we want his legs to be more grounded. And his eyes are going all over the place. Okay. So, what are we going to do? We need to edit our puppet a bit. We call, it, we call him a puppet, right? So, what we're going to do is... Ta -ta 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 -ta. We are going to first... Look at our eye gaze. With the eye gaze, we see that we are using our camera input. So if I look up, he will look up. If I look down, he will look down. Okay? We don't want that. I, I prefer to use the keyboard input. So click check on the keyboard input and uncheck on the camera input. So now by pressing the left and right keys on the keyboard, you can see it's looking left and right and up down up down left right okay simple as that all right now jory is moving all over the place we want to have him grounded so this is the record area here we want to rig this character a little more all right so let's this is record and we're going on to rigging click on your rig and then we're seeing jory he's not moving at all good because what we want to do, we're going to be working on the rig right now. Now, as you notice on this section here, we have all our layers. And notice that they are, they are the same layers as those in Photoshop. All right. If we were to click on our main character layer, we'll see that Jory has been outlined. Okay. So this here would be Jory's center point here. Just bring him a little. I like to use the navel area. Okay. With the head, the head is okay. All right. Now with the body, everything seems to be okay. All this is highlighted here. Now, remember I told you that we've seen that he's bouncing all over the place. Okay. We click on our character. Okay. Folder right, right here. That's the main folder. And what we're going to do, we're going to use the pin tool. This tool here and pin this guy. Pin him on the bottom part here. So he'll be pinned on the floor. So let's see what happens here when we go into our record. Ah. Okay. So as you can see, right now, Jory, okay, is pinned to the floor. So he's Moving a little more naturally, okay? All right. So, as you notice, guys, I am shifting my... Hmm. My eyebrows are going up and down. And if we notice, there is some... Okay? Some overlap in here that we just don't want. So, we may have to add some more color, some more brown on to our nose hair. Okay? So... We can make these corrections right now. So let us go into select Jory. And we're going to click on this icon right here. The Photoshop icon. Instead of right clicking and edit original, the Photoshop icon is right here. Okay. So we're going to go into it. We are going to let me hide this for a while here. And hide the iframe. Okay. And add... Okay, some more of the brown on our nose. The brown on his skin, we're just going to add some more of that. Oh my goodness. Um, 
you know, it's a little lower for our brush tool. And then we're just going to add right here. All right. So if you were to save this, all right, if you were to save it, we are going to go into Character Animator. And it will, up ah, if you notice, it, it's, it's updated. <laughs> but hey, we're not seeing the rest of the head. This is because we had all of this hidden. Boom and boom. Okay. So let's bring this back. We're going to save it. Make sure you save. And then we're going to bring him back. Hey. Hey. So when I raise my eyebrow, okay, it's a little better. All right. Now, if you notice as well, guys, we have our arms as different layers. Now, let me show you the reason why I have the arms as different layers. So let me go back into rig mode. If we go to our body layer, we'll see that everything, all right, is connected. Everything is connected, all right? So if we were to shift his body, the arms will move as well. But we want the arms to be independent. We want them to move on their own, all right? So what we're going to do, we're just going to choose the right arm first. If you notice that there's a blue rectangle around the, 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 the right arm, all right? We want it to be independent. So just by clicking... On this empty box here, we will see it turns to a crown. All right. So by using our origin, this little circle right here on the arm is called your origin. So we're going to shift the origin to where our shoulders meet in this corner here. All right. Now, Notice that when it's out of the area, the whole area of our friend here, Jory, is yellow. And once it is hinged or connected to a particular point, it turns green. Okay? Now, when our shoulders on our arms move is on this area here. So, we want it to be pivoted, um, pivoted around this area. Okay? So, this would be like a pivot point. Alright? So, we will do the same with the, the left arm. Okay, and then we move our origin here to the top right here. So if you were to check our movement, okay, you'd see that the arms tend to have a little movement of their own, okay, because they're separate. Before, we were not seeing this overlapping arm, this arm that was overlapped right here, all right? Everything would be moving at once. Okay, excellent. Okay, guys, so we are satisfied with this hair for now. Okay, but our arms look a little stiff. All right, so what do we do? Okay, what I do sometimes, I would put some dangle, some dangle on our arms. So what I do, I would, this is called your dangle tool. All right, and I will just click on this. My arm is selected here, and I'll just click on the wrist area here, and on the right arm, right, I will click on the wrist area here. So when I go into my record, all right, we will see that his arm, his arms, they dangle a bit, okay? Now, guys, if you notice that this guy's eyes also blinks, see that? It's blinking. Why is that happening? This is because, let me open my Photoshop file. If you notice here, let me zoom out. If you notice here, guys, we have in right eye and left eye, there's left blink and right blink. All right. Automatically, when you blink, everything in the folder goes off and the blink is revealed. Now, because we have no Nothing, we did any, didn't do any line or what for the blink. All right, we're not seeing that. But it still appears to be blinking. All right, but if we were to add for your right blink a line right here. And for your left blink, another line here. Now make sure, note, make sure that you have this hidden. So I would hide the left blink and I would hide the right blink. 
Let's see if that. Okay, and as the character up updates, you see when I blink, okay, you see that line coming up. Okay, so, yes, so you have the blink right there. The one before was okay, but I like to do my blinks like this. All right, so let us go down to the mouths. If we have Jory here with no mouth. Jory has no mouth, all right? So let's add a mouth on Jory, all right? So if you notice, guys, when you go on the page, okay, the OK Samurai page, you will see that there is also a mouth template, okay? And you can generate mouths. Like, you could just add this in here. Okay, so once you've opened, once you have downloaded the file, you get this um, template mouth zip file. And when you unzip that, you will get the mouth pack. Now, if you open this folder, all right, you will see mouth one and mouth two. So let's check out mouth one. Okay, if you notice, we have mouth one here. Okay, all the mouths are seen. All right, so... Also, we're going to get go in. Let's see how mouth 2 looks. All right. Into our character pack. And then we're going to mouth 2. Okay. So, the mouth 2. Let me just... Just hide all of these files here. And we're going to have our neutral. Okay. So, the mouth 2 tends to be for... I would say it will tend to be for the front view. Yeah, it will tend to be for the front view. And when we go into the mouth one, okay, it is more appropriate for the three-quarter view. So I'm going to be using mouth one. Okay. Make sure I have everything except the neutral. Make sure everything except the neutral is seen here. All right. So what I'm going to do here, guys, I am going to copy this folder. Okay, I'm going to go to our Jory file. Notice that Jory here has a mouth, a mouth folder here as well. I'm going to delete that layer. Okay, and I am going to paste this layer on Jory. Okay, and now just let me resize it. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just go through the different mouse with you. Just let me zoom in on this guy here. This is okay. All right. So when I go into the mouth fold, uh, the mouth folder right here, we have the neutral mouth. Okay. And here we have our ah. Ah. All right. And we have our D consonant d here we have our e here we have f notice that his mouth chomps down on the lip all right we have the l notice that the tongue curls under okay the the teeth we have our m m the two lips lips meet to a m o we have the r and we have the S. The S is similar to the D. All right. We have the U, uh, U H, and we have the W O. The W is similar to the to the O, but we have more of a circle, an oval shape right here without the without the teeth. All right. So we have to keep it on neutral. Make sure the neutral is on because when you're not speaking, the mutual look is what you see. So when we save this. All right, when we save it, let us go into our character animator. Ah, and we see his mouth right here. Now, as you can see, guys, he is actually talking. He is actually speaking while I'm speaking. That's because my mic here is on. All right, my mic here is on. So our character will be speaking while we're speaking. All right.
Yeah. So we can your character can be expressive. Okay, so then we have the eyes moving and whatnot. But then the arms are just there. What we can do as well, okay guys, we could actually have his arms moving while we control while we drag the arms. But how do we do that? Let's do it on the right arm. We could actually put bones in our character. Okay? So go back into rig mode. We are already on our right arm here. So this here is called your stick tool. Click on your stick tool and then we are going to just place some bones in there. So we have this here. It stops at the elbow. And this one here. In fact, I'll bring it a little lower. Down, lower down here. And we're going to Click on this down to the wrist right here. Okay. And we're also going to add this tool here called a dragger. You will see the magic of the dragger in a while. So just let me click on this and just add it on next to the dangle tool I, I have here. So this would be your dragger. So when I go into record, look at what's, what's happening here. When I go to record, our friend here will move his arm just by dragging. Dragging the mouse, putting the mouse where the dragger is, and we're going to... But then, if we drag this guy right here, all right, the arm stays. Okay, so let us go into this dragger property right here. This area here is your properties. You go into the dragger properties, and then, okay, we, is right now it's on hold in place. We don't want that. Okay? We want to return to rest. So as it's on return to rest, just click on that window right here. And it will go back. Drop him and it will return to rest. Clook. Clook. Tick. <laughs> okay? Now, if our arm here was not on a layer by itself, we would not be able to, be, to do all that. So if you want to shift the other parts of the body here, all of them will be on the separate... Okay, all of them will be on the separate um, layers in um, Photoshop. Okay, so notice that the arm would bend where the, where the joints would be. So it ended at the elbow. So we're going to bend all here. Okay, right. And, it, and notice it returns to place. You can also, also, sorry, control the amount of time it goes back to place. So I right, put it on five seconds. Five four three two okay but i don't want it to go down for too long so i'm just gonna have it one second is okay it's too small i'm um, too slow sorry so i'll put that 0 0.2 like before and right 0 0.2 all right so okay if we want to guys as well we could change his expressions around a bit let's go back into photoshop in here we have the let's play around with the iframe now keep this in mind that if you want to change different things about a particular layer it's better to have it in a folder so i'm going to put our iframe in a folder i'm going to call it iframe as well and place that iframe in the iframe folder. Let me explain to you why I'm doing this. If I were to duplicate this layer. Okay. And I'm going to put our friend here. Our friend Jory squinting. Alright. So I'm just going to add. No, not here. I'm going to add the squint. iframe copy. I'm going to rename this to iframe 1. All right, and just gonna put the squint in right here. I'm joined with my mouse right now, guys, so just bear with me. Okay, that's one here, and I'm going to add the other right here. Okay, so he's squinting right there. Okay, so we don't want this to show right now. We, we prefer this one to show. Okay, 
because that's the base that's the base one okay so just let me save that okay so if we have to go in back in our character animator okay so we're not seeing the squinting let's go back into rig mode what we're gonna do is we're gonna control the squinting with a key on our keyboard so how do we do this like i said before guys we have all right our character the we have our exact folders right here so we're going to the iframe folder and we're gonna click on this little arrow right here once you click on it it will collapse so you see iframe and iframe one so what we do we highlight iframe one we're gonna right click on this and we're going to create a trigger. Your trigger would be the button that you press on your mouse, on your keyboard. Sorry. So on your on this, once you create the trigger, this window for triggers will appear, and then you'll have iframe one. So let us click on this empty box here, and in this empty box, you will state which. Um, letter or number or symbol on your keyboard would generate your squint so i'm just gonna use a all right now also there's something that we need to check as well this area here hide others in group when triggered so when you press that a button we want the others in the group as in the layer i'm um, sorry the folder that you made the iframe layer you want that other layer to go off it will hide and this layer would reveal so check this all right it's checked and then we're gonna go back in record and then just by pressing the the a key and now we're seeing that we're having problems right here something is not happening so let's go back into rig mode all right and oh yes Yes, it was happening. I just wasn't seeing. Okay, yes. All right. So as we can see, our friend here is squinting. So while he's speaking, all right, he can squint, you know? Yeah. Now also, guys, you could play around with these tools right here, this properties section. In the transform section, we can scale our character up, down, Okay, if you want to zoom in on that head here. All right, we can. Okay, so we can play around okay, with the positioning, the opacity, the rotation of your character. Okay, and with the, the face here. Okay, we can... Guys, so now the camera input is on. So the camera input will control the face. All right, so here we can control the head tilt strength. If it's on zero okay the head cannot tilt it's just going in a lateral movement all right so if we were to put crank up that head head tilt to a 190 okay you'll see how <laughs> the head will tilt and up down we don't want that that's too extreme so i prefer to have it probably around let me see around 64 right okay 64 is okay for me okay we have the eyebrow strength as well right now it's on 75 okay all right, and that's too extreme. Okay, so I like to have my eyebrow strength for on here. All right, okay. So you can play around with these parameters, guys. Okay, play around with them. We have the mouse strength, the sensitivity, and so on. Okay, all right, guys. There's a lot. <laughs> um, ca character animator entails a lot. So, guys, you can play around with it, play around with the tools. It all takes practice. All right, it all takes practice, practice, and more practice. Okay. So with this being said, guys, I hope um, this has helped. I am going to post a few more tutorials on there because character animator is vast. Okay. So as, we, as I leave, I just want you to just keep on practicing. Okay. Bye, guys.